Okay, I just started the recording. Okay, everyone, this is Katie Grossman, and um, she's brilliant and she knows lots of things about lots of things. And I just love when we all share all of our information with each other. So thanks for coming, Katie. Thanks for telling us your story. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Such a treat to be here with all of you right now in this moment and whoever's watching when this gets recorded in the future, in that future moment. It's nice to meet you all in all those moments. Um, so yeah, we're going to do a little Marma therapy today and I'm really excited. Um, so I'll start with just like a little general background of Marma and talk a little bit about what we'll do today and we'll kind of explore some different pressure points and at the end I'll send Kathy some links to the different maps so that you'll have maps that you can access and refer to so that you can practice in the future pretty easily. Um, so I studied a form of Marma therapy that comes from this warrior tradition and I had a mentor that I studied with here in the States and a teacher who I studied with in India. And um, this was of a warrior tradition. And so the way I was told about Marma was that this was a martial art with the component of a healing modality as well. So these Marma acupressure points can be used for healing and also were used in war. And so this warrior tradition, they would go to war, they would use these different pressure points to get their opponents and strike them down. <laughs> and then they would come back after the trauma of war and they would use the same pressure points on their bodies and on each other to remove stress from the nervous system. They would also use these points before battle to strengthen the nervous system. So it was kind of like a pre and post practice in the healing um, modality aspect. And, um, and so it's a really good way to like reset the nervous system, pull out stress out of the nervous system. And it's very similar to reflexology and acupuncture. There's lots of similarities across many of these different modalities and many of them have a martial arts component. So this one is kind of similar in that way. And I was taught that Marma means secret. And so these marma points, they hide in these different crevices all over the body. And they are secrets. They hold the secrets. They're like doorways that open up into our body and reveal our body's wisdom to us. Um, sometimes we'll talk about marma therapy being an awareness therapy, making your body aware of itself, just like most body work, right? By putting pressure and opening up certain meridians and certain pathways in the body, we can make the body and the pituitary gland aware of itself. And it can be used as an embodiment practice. It can be used to um, help relieve pain in the moment. Uh, it can be used as a preventative, like I was talking about. You can use it to strengthen the nervous system and the different uh, systems of the body, like the immune system, as a preventative technique. And it can also be used after an event. If you have an injury, you can use it around certain areas, either reflexology-wise. If you don't want to press a direct injury, you can use associated points on other areas of the body to promote healing. Um, and with kind of more chronic situations, you can press certain points to bring attention and awareness to that area of the body to stimulate the body's innate healing ability and bring the body back into a state of homeostasis. We also like to think of Marma kind of similar to yoga, where you're basically applying pressure and you're blocking um, the blood flow and circulation. And then when you release it, the blood can flow faster and quicker into certain areas, which oxygenates certain areas of the body. So I always that thought of like bandhas and when you're in a twist or you're in a hold or a bind, you're kind of doing a similar thing in yoga. And so I learned with Kathy first. And so when I started learning Marma, I realized there was a very similar mirroring aspect, like a lot of these Vedic systems have. Um, and so sometimes I'll think about it in that context too. So you can use it in an area that you want to bring circulation to. 
Um, so those are a few of the ways I like to kind of talk about Marma and what it can do and how we can use it. And the thing I really love about it is it's simple. All you need are really your hands. If you have a wooden spoon, you can use that as a tool. You can really use almost any edge or anything as a tool, but your hands will always do. And so it's, you know, something that you have with you all the time, something that you can do in any moment, um, wherever you are throughout the day. So it's a great, simple self-care practice. And it can be, I find when you, you, when you kind of do it repetitively or you kind of accumulate it over time and you have it in your lifestyle as a practice that you do regularly, you can really start to see results when you kind of do it that way, similar to any practice it's, there's an accumulative effect that you kind of have when you have any type of practice whether it's meditation or yoga or or marma so yeah i'm excited to share some little bits and pieces with you guys today and feel free to ask any questions along the way um is it okay to stop for questions quickly now yeah okay anyone have any questions before we kind of begin <laughs> I didn't know that Marma meant secret. I love that. It's one of its many meanings, right? Like most Sanskrit words, they mean like 50 different things. That's kind of the one that really stuck with me. And I think that was kind of the initial way that entry that I had into understanding it. And so it made sense. It's like, these are all these secret little points that hold the wisdom of our of our body's experience and our, the intelligence of our body. Um, and I just love to think of them as these little secret doorways that we have that are ready to be unlocked at any time. So yeah, it's cool. That's great, Kitty. I had never heard of Marma truthfully before to, before this posting and I had to look it up and I was like, Oh, that sounds super cool. But when you say you have a Marma practice, do you tend to use your same points or how do you incorporate it into your your life so for example someone might have like a an issue that they're working on maybe you're maybe it's an emotional thing or a physical thing for example you could be working on your liver energy like you know that your liver is kind of a thing it's something you want to keep in balance you struggle with it or you just want to encourage it to kind of stay in a healthy place, um, or you want to work on reducing inflammation, you could press your liver daily as a practice that you kind of do over time. Um, I press all the points because I'm like, why not? <laughs> so I will, not every single point on my body, but I will often press like either all my hand points or all my feet points or both, depending on how much time I have. And that kind of just makes the body aware of its whole self and it kind of harmonizes the body. One like many of these traditions, you kind of hear these stories that are passed down. And so it's hard to say exactly like what is the total truth. One story that I heard about how they found these Marma points was that these points are really frequencies, right? Like we have a physical body, but we also have all these different dimensions. And um, there, it was said that um, whoever found and figured out Marma, whether it was the Rishis or whomever, would actually listen for the frequency of the points and that they each had a sound. So they would press the liver point and it had a certain frequency and pitch and a sound to it. And they would press all over the body to find that same note but at different octaves. And that's how they found the liver point on the hand and the liver point on the feet and the liver point on the ear and on, because there's liver points all over the body. And so it was all through sound and frequency, which I find fascinating. And um, I think of a lot of the time when I press these Marma points that I'm tuning my, it's like a tuning fork for my body to bring my, my, my system into harmony. And so I just want, I just want to insert that Katie sings and she has one of the most beautiful voices I've ever, ever heard. You're very kind. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Um, music is something that I love and that has been a great love of mine. And so when I heard that story, it really resonated with me because I was like, oh my 
God, these are all sounds. Of course, my mind went to one day, I just want to like sing to people's pressure points. Like that would be cool instead of pressing them all day. <laughs> Still figuring that out, but it's like, I'm on a mission because I find that those more subtle aspects of us are fascinating. And I love that, that I can press a point and it feels like it's harmonizing with the rest of my body. So when I do press all the points, it's kind of like pressing all the notes and tuning every, you know, if you're tuning a guitar, you tune every single string, not just one or two of them. So I kind of like using the pressure points that way as the daily practice of checking in with my whole system. But like I might have some reproductive issues or, you know, hormonal things. Maybe I'll press the, I'll just choose the ovaries. And that's my point that I press every day. So you can also kind of specify to a specific organ or system, um, different organs, like in acupuncture as well. And in other different um, healing traditions are usually associated with emotion, emotions as well. So you could also be working through grief. So you press your lung points every day until you kind of move through the grief. So there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of incorporate it as a daily practice or as like a consistent practice. Yeah. Any other questions so far? <laughs> okay, so I'll press some points if you guys are ready. Um, so my teacher in India, he always says start with heart. So we're gonna start with the heart point because it's a good place to start. Um, so we'll start with the heart point on the left hand. So uh, the left side of the body is where the heart point is and, on, and the spleen and on the right side is the liver gallbladder side, but otherwise almost every other pressure point you'll find on both sides of the hands and feet. So this is only located on the left hand. And I like to think of drawing a line between the pinky and the ring finger right about here. You can take your thumb, or if you've got a wooden spoon and you feel like using that as a tool, you can always like lay the hand down. It's kind of nice to use a spoon. Yeah, so you've got <laughs> right here. Um, if you can lay the hand flat so that you've got some weight behind it so you don't have to press too hard. And then it's really nice to hold the points at least for three breaths, but you can do longer holds too. Uh, we'll do maybe five for this point. Um, I'm going to use my finger. So if you want, you can close your eyes and we'll just take a nice deep inhale in. As we exhale out, we're going to press into the point. And you want to keep the pressure steady as you take another inhale in. And on the exhale, you can press a little bit deeper. A few more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale in. Exhale, notice any sensations in your hand or in your body. Last inhale in. And as you exhale, you can slowly start to rub the point in a clockwise or counterclockwise. Rub and release the point to bring the blood flow back. So that's your heart point. Um, and the heart is associated with many different things in different traditions. I was taught um, it has to do with happiness and sadness. So if you want to inspire happiness or you want to kind of offset or relieve some sadness, that's a nice point to press. And of course it's great for circulation and all of the physical attributes that the heart functions within our body. So if you have any racing heart or anything that's kind of going on with the heart, you can kind of press on that as well. Um, and I find just generally slowing down and breathing just like you would in any moment that you were taking helps. And this is just kind of like a guided way sometimes to help us get back into the body. Um, so let's do the spleen next, which is right underneath. So if the heart was here, the spleen is right about here. And sometimes so you can press a little on an angle or in, kind of press around in the area to kind of feel where it is. You kind of, some of the points will be a little tender and you'll kind of know when you've hit it. Other ones might not be as tender. 
We'll take a few breaths here. Once you kind of find it, you can close your eyes. We'll take a nice inhale in. Exhale, press into the point. Keeping the pressure steady, inhaling in. Exhale. A few more, inhale in. Bringing the awareness into the body, exhale out. Two more, inhale. Exhale, press a little bit deeper. Inhale in. And as you exhale, you can slowly start to release and relieve the pressure point. Very good. So now we're gonna do the same points on the right hand, but this time they're gonna be the liver and then the gallbladder. And so these are kind of the points that are, like I said, a bit different and not on each hand. Otherwise they pretty much mirror each other. So same thing, if you drew a line on your right hand between the pinky and the ring finger, come right about here, we've got the liver. Again, you can kind of play around with the angle that you press the point, kind of see, feel what's tender or not. Maybe it's not tender at all. And we're gonna just close the eyes, take a nice deep inhale in. Exhale, press into the point. Inhale in. Exhale. Keeping the pressure steady as you inhale. Exhale, tuning into the body. Inhale in. Exhale out. Last one, inhale. And as you exhale, slowly start to rub and release the point. Very good. And we will then come, so if this was the liver, right below here is gonna be the gallbladder point. Awesome. Kind of press around. When I first started doing this, my mentor would say, it doesn't really matter where you press, everywhere is kind of a point. And so, <laughs> can't get it wrong, <laughs> which I liked. And I, Think of that often. So we're gonna close our eyes, take a nice deep inhale in. As we exhale, we'll press into the point. Inhaling in. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, keeping the pressure steady or deepening it a bit, if that feels right for you. Inhale in. So you exhale, tuning into the body, noticing any sensations. Inhale. Exhale out. Last inhale. And as you exhale, you can slowly start to release. How's everyone doing so far? Good, okay. So those are usually the first points that I'll start to press. And so they can release a lot of peripheral stress in the body. Kind of the first points that you start to press will release just general built up stress. Um, so I'm gonna show you a couple more points on the hands and we'll do maybe some on the feet and a couple on the face. That feels good for everyone. So one of my other favorite pressure points that is so easy to press 
that I find really helpful for anxiety and self-esteem and just centering is the solar plexus point and it's right in the center of both palms. So we'll do both of them. Um, so press really hard. Um, <laughs> press right in the center of the palm of the left hand. And um, yes, so this is the solar plexus point and like I said, it's great for reducing anxiety. It's great for just that, any kind of nervous stomach kind of stomach turning on itself kind of energy whenever we're kind of holding, um, as well as boosting self-esteem, self-confidence, sense of self. And so I find that to be super helpful. Uh, so once you kind of find that center point, we're gonna take a nice deep inhale in. We'll do just maybe three breaths for this one. So we'll inhale in. Exhale out, pressing into the point. Inhaling in. Exhale, holding the pressure steady. Inhaling in. Pressing down as we exhale. Taking one last inhale in. And as we exhale, you can start to release and let the point go. Very good. So we're gonna do the same one on the right hand. Hi to our new guest. <laughs> so the solar plexus point on the right hand, right in the center of the palm. Right there. And you can relax your hand down once you get the point so you can let it re rest in your lap if that's comfortable. We're gonna just close the eyes, turning inwards, taking a nice deep inhale in. As we exhale, pressing into the point. Inhaling in. Keeping the pressure steady as we exhale. Inhaling in. Exhale out, pressing a little deeper if that feels comfortable. And inhaling one more time. And as you exhale, starting to release and rub the point. Very good. So another hand favorite of mine is the thyroid point, um, which also is just basically on this pad of each thumb. And so generally, if you use your hands a lot, just this area feels overused, whether you're typing or just using your hands doing whatever you do. So it feels really good just for those muscles and also for regulating um, the thyroid is like the thermostat of the body. And as our body and our temperature is always changing, it has to work and do a lot of adjusting and especially during season change like we're in right now it can be a little bit exhausting and the thyroid can have can kind of go into working overload a bit right now so it's a great point to press during season change so we're going to start with the left hand so if you were to kind of draw a line from the thumb right into that the center pad of the thumb right in there so I like, I still will press this. I mean, you can use your tool to press. Um, I will take, usually take my thumb and kind of come around like this and then kind of flip my hand down. So yeah, then you flip the hand down and you can kind of relax it down and get into the point pretty well that way with the thumb. So once you've got that lovely thyroid point, we're gonna give some love to you. You can close the eyes, take a nice deep inhale in. Exhale, pressing into the point. Inhale in. As we exhale, keeping the pressure steady, or if it feels good, you can press in a little bit deeper with each exhale. Inhaling in. Exhaling out. Last inhale. 
And as you exhale, you can rub and release the point. Very good. And we're gonna do the same thing on the right hand. So you can either use your tool. The point is right here. I'm gonna do this move. And once you kind of get there, you can close your eyes, turning our attention inwards, taking a nice deep inhale in. As we exhale, pressing deeper into the point. Inhaling in. Keeping the pressure steady, noticing any sensations in the body. Two more, inhale in. Exhale out. Last one. And as you exhale, you can slowly start to rub and just release the point. Very good. So yummy. <laughs> so that will be the hands for now. Any questions so far before we move on to some? So I just have a comment. Um, what did we do right before the thyroid point? Solar plexus. So the solar plexus point, me pressing on it, made me like get really hot. And then as soon as we went to the thyroid, was that the last one? Yeah. As soon as we went to the thyroid, everything returned to normal. So interesting. On well, the solar plexus, when we think about it, where it is and what it does and the area that it sits within the body is all about our agni, our digestive fire, right? And so it totally makes sense. So interesting. The thing that I've loved and found so fascinating about Marma from person to person is you could have all the people of the same body type, but give them a treatment and depending on where they come from and just where they're at in that day or how they're doing, they'll have completely different experiences. So I've had people who'd get up after a treatment and they feel like they're on top of the world and they feel super energetic. I have others who are like ready to pass out and go to sleep. <laughs> like you can have the full spectrum. So there's kind of like many of these practices, like the, when the, bo the body's coming into its, its, its innate balance. So it has that kind of adaptogenic thing, right? You can press all the same points, but it's going to affect us all so uniquely. So I love hearing what that does for people. <laughs> it's so cool. So I figure we'll do a few on the face um, so that after we don't have to touch our feet and then our face. I feel like that's a good, a good move. Um, <laughs> so I'll just, I'll, I'll, I have so many favorite points on the face. I think the wake up point since it's the evening i'm going to leave that for another time <laughs> um but it's a really cool point and i think today we'll focus on the jaw because that is always a great spot to focus on <laughs> hey katie can you tell us where the wake up point is but we won't press it yeah i will show you where it is it's such a cool point it was to, i don't know if this was like an exaggeration of language it's what happens when you learn from other people. You never really know. Um, but I was told this is like the point that will like bring you back from a coma because it really stimulates so much. And it's great to do in the morning when you kind of want to wake up and or whenever you need to like kind of stimulate and bring energy. So it's you kind of have to play around with it. I like to access it with my the tip of my thumb because the angle is good. It's right under here, kind of pressing up into the nose. <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> and you can kind of feel around in there. We might just not hold and press it, but you can kind of feel where there's a little indent. And that's the wake up point. So you can play with that in the morning tomorrow and report back. <laughs> I'm really curious how that would go for some people. Um, and I'm sure they don't call it like the wake up point, but that's what I'm calling it today. <laughs> um, um, so let's, I just figure, I want to show you a few different ways that you can press the jaw without using your fingers because the thing about marma therapists is their fingers get tired if they're using them all the time. And so I like, I loved learning that my hands were made of so many different tools and these bones in here can be incredible tools for pressing on things, just like the knuckles or so many different aspects. So we're going to use this 
part of the hand to press into both jaws. And so we're gonna really be getting at the points right in here. You can kind of go up and down, but we're gonna use the top here to kind of press in. And you can kind of use um, use your hands to grip the back of the neck and then kind of put use the palm of the hand to kind of push down so you can get leverage that way if you really wanna press in. So if you want, you can close your eyes and we'll take a few breaths and we'll just press into this point. I know it's a little funny. We'll just take a nice inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in. Exhale. Two more, inhale in. Exhale. Last inhale. And as you exhale, you can kind of roll and release the points a little bit. <laughs> oh, I can see how your jaw feels after that. <laughs> um, I mean, gosh, love all these points. Um, let's do the pituitary point. It's really simple. We can use a finger for it. Um, so the pituitary gland is so important. It does so much for our hormonal system and just to run the whole show of the body. So it's kind of right about here. And you can take any finger or you can take two fingers if you want, kind of press in. Yeah. Very nice. And you don't have to press too hard, just kind of bringing your awareness to this point as you close the eyes, taking a nice deep inhale in. Exhaling out. Inhaling in. Exhale. Two more, inhale in. Exhale. Last one, inhale. And as you exhale, you can slowly start to rub and release the point. Mm. And like one more on the, or we can do, this is a nice one. Um, so these are, these points are really good. They're like lung points. They also kind of relieve the pec minor muscles. And so we're going to do them separately so that you can kind of use one hand on each one and relax, relax the other hand down. So there's so many points all the way up right underneath the collarbone here. We're going to kind of come in and right about here. Yeah. I always like to cross. And like I said, there's multiple points, so you can kind of press around. And I'm going for this one today. This is really nice. It really can open up the back of the neck and the chest and the lungs, the thymus. So it does a lot of good stuff. We're going to take a nice deep inhale in, closing the eyes. Exhale out. Keeping the pressure steady, inhaling in. Exhale, tuning into the body. Two more, inhale. Exhale out. Last inhale. As you exhale, you can slowly start to rub and release the point. And we're going to come do the same one, mirroring on the other side. So wherever you were, finding that mirroring point. 
You'll see a lot of times the marble points kind of, your hand almost like slips into them. There's like a little indent sometimes that you'll find that in the points. So we're gonna close the eyes once you kind of find your point, inhaling in. Exhale out. Inhaling in. Exhale as you keep the pressure steady. Two more, inhale. Exhale out. Last one, inhale in. Exhale and release and you can start to rub and release the point. Very good. Love those. So we're going to do a few feet points now if you're up for it. Any questions before we move on to the feet? Okay, perfect. So I want to do some different points that we're not doing all the same stuff. So one of my favorite points on the feet that I think feels really good is the stomach point. So this is a little awkward, but I'm going to start on the left foot. <laughs> Stomach point is right in here. So you can use the thumb, you can use your tool, <laughs> but you want to come in right and around here. Once you kind of get that guy, kind of press around till you find it. Take a nice deep inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in, keeping the pressure steady as you exhale. Inhaling in, noticing any sensations in the body while you press this point as you exhale. Last one, inhale. And as you exhale, you can rub and release the point. Do the same guy on the right side. Same stomach point. Put it in here. Hmm. Since you find that point, Take a nice deep inhale in. Exhale as you press into the point. Inhale in. Exhale out. Keeping the pressure steady as you inhale. As you exhale, if it feels comfortable, press a little bit deeper. Inhaling in. And as you exhale, you can rub and release the point. Let's do, let's do the long point. The long points are really nice on the feet too. So we're going to start again with the left foot and we're going to come, if you were drawing a line, I guess, from these two toes, right down the middle. So right underneath here. So I'll grab it with my thumb. You're welcome to use your tool. Ah, there you go. Right under kind of the ridge. We're gonna take a nice deep inhale in, close the eyes if that feels right. Exhale out, pressing into the point. Inhaling in. Exhale out. Two 
Two more, inhale. Keeping the pressure steady or pressing a little bit deeper as you exhale. Last one, inhale in. And as you exhale, you can slowly start to rub and release the point. We're gonna do the same one on the right foot. Same thing if you were to draw a line right down the center, right in here is the lungs. So once you get your point, and close the eyes, take a nice deep inhale in. Exhale, pressing into the point. Keeping the pressure steady, inhaling in. Exhale out. Inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale. Exhale, you can release the point. Do two more. Um, oh, I see there's a raised hand. Um, I don't know what a raised hand is. <laughs> it means I have a question. Yeah, okay, please go for it. <laughs> so is it, is it normal that the when you do the right, that it's usually less tender because you released it? Or is that just... It's different for everyone. Usually um, like people who have, so usually like the right side is the more pitha or the heat side of the body and the left side is more of the vata and kapha side of the body. So if one, it's very often that one side will be a little more sensitive than the other depending on the person's dosha or any imbalances that are going on. So it doesn't always feel the same on every side and it's good to press both sides because it starts to kind of harmonize both those organs together like on both sides of the left and right side of our body and also in the pitta vata and kapha of all those um the humors those humors that we kind of combinations of elements that we have within the body so that's very common but very different and unique to each person. And it could be different today and it could be different tomorrow. Like you go on an airplane and your vata gets all, you know, erratic and then the left side is a little more sensitive or you could have a day where you were overheated and then the right side might be a little bit more tender or sensitive. So it will vary depending on how you're doing. And that's why it's an awareness therapy because it makes us aware of what's going on in the body. And it also makes the pituitary gland aware of what's happening so it can kind of help to balance the body. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Hey Katie, I have a question. Is yeah. there a reason that we do the left side first? So like I said, the start with heart, like my teacher said, um, he, he was always a big fan of starting with the heart, which is on the left side of the body. And for, I think, it, I believe it was for circulatory reasons that you kind of would start with the left and go right. When I used to do treatments with people, I would usually start on the left side and then work to the right. If I was working with someone else, which I did for many years, we would just do, you would get both sides done at the same time. Um, and then with the feet, when I would work on people, I would do both feet at the same time, which is kind of cool to have both sides done symmetrically. But we only have two sets of hands, so we can only do one side. So I tend to start with the left. I don't think it's bad if you started with the right. And it's okay, you know. I'm sure someone else would tell you that it was wrong, but I'm not going to tell you that it's wrong. <laughs> Not my style. Um, intuition should lead you in how you press your points. Um, there's like so many points that I want to press, but I feel like the kidneys were calling to be pressed because that part of the body, the foot just feels like it wants to be pressed. And then we'll do the pituitary point after, which feels amazing on the big toe. Kathy knows that point. And, <laughs> um, and then we'll kind of just do a short Shavasana so you can soak in whatever that did for us and then we'll just have a little bit of time for questions if that works for everyone. 
Okay. So the kidney point, you know, and kidneys are kind of like fear and courage. That's kind of their emotional energies that they're associated with from what I've learned. And so I feel like it's a really nice thing to support, especially when we're in such a interesting time um, to kind of give ourselves a little extra courage. So uh, the kidney point is right. Um, so let's see if I'm getting this right. Kind of in here. Around here. <laughs> kind of in the corner of the heel. All right, so we're gonna take a nice deep inhale in, pressing into that point. As we exhale, we'll press down. Inhaling in. Exhale. Keeping the pressure steady as we inhale in. Exhale out. Last one, inhale. And as you exhale, you can just rub and release. Same thing on this side, right here. Hmm. Once you kind of find that spot, we're going to close the eyes, take a nice deep inhale in. Exhale out as we press into the point. Inhaling in. Exhale out. One more inhale. Exhale, last one, inhale in. As you exhale out, you can rub and release the point. And our last pressure point for tonight is going to be on the big toe and it's right next to another one. Either one you hit will be great. Um, this is the pituitary point. So if you've got the big toe here, it's on the inside of the toe. In here. You can press this, you can try pressing this with your tool. So there's two, there's one, and there's one kind of underneath in here. You can press it with your thumb. You can also use the knuckle of your thumb and press around and try to use the knuckles to kind of get in at an angle. It's a little hard to show. Sometimes that little knuckle joint is small enough, it kind of gets right into the point. in here. Okay, so take a nice inhale in. Exhale out. Holding the point steady as we inhale. Exhale. Inhale in. Exhale. Last one, inhale in. And as you exhale, you can rub and release the point. And now on the right foot, we've got right in here. To a terry point. Find it, when you find it. So we'll take a nice deep inhale in, closing the eyes. Exhaling out. Inhale in. Exhale. Keeping the pressure steady. Inhaling in. 
Exhale out. Last inhale. And as you exhale, you can slowly start to rub and release the point. Very good. If you want to stay seated, you can, or you can lay down if you feel like laying down just, just for a minute so we can just soak that in quickly. And so just close the eyes for a moment. Take a minute here. Allowing our body to just soak in all the work we just did. Feeling the ground beneath us, whether we're sitting up and we feel it beneath our seat or if we're laying down, just feeling the earth coming up to hold us. I'm going to sing just a few tones just to kind of seal everything in. So just letting the sound come over you as you lay and rest or sit and rest. Uh, slowly open your eyes or come up to seated in your time. There you go. <laughs> so I know I only have a few minutes left, but if there's any questions that anyone has, you're welcome to ask. <laughs> No questions. Everyone good? <laughs> Katie, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for singing to us. <laughs> thank you for taking care of us. I feel like that hour went really quickly. I feel like it went quickly too. <laughs> it was such a treat to meet and see you all and to share this with you and like I said, I'm going to send Kathy some of those charts of the hands and feet and the face so she can, you know, pass them around and sending you all lots of love tonight. And yeah, thank you for having me. Such a treat. Thank you. And Katie, I don't know if you can see the notes, but Ruthie and Erica <laughs> both said thank you. Oh, thank you guys. So thank you so much. It was awesome. Oh, yay. I'm so glad. I hope you all have a very restful evening. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Kath. Mm. <laughs> mm.